So the uh, vast majority of our soldiers are back, and for some that may soon signal an end to their military life. But what happens when a career soldier starts working in the civilian world? It's an issue that's been closely studied by an academic at the University of Leicester, and Brady Harron has been to meet him. Okay, 1958, I was 15, I left school, I joined the army. I don't know why, but I did. I'd always wanted to join the army. Enjoyed every minute of it, and at 40 years of age, my military career came to an end. So I looked around, went for interviews, and luckily got a job almost straight away in it with an electronics company. Jim McDermott transferred easily from the army to civilian workforce, but he thinks many employers don't realise what an asset ex-soldiers can be. I think there's a misconception rather than a perception, a misconception that people uh, who've been in the military for so long have got khaki brains, that they're going to be like Windsor Davis from It Ain't Half Hot Mum, uh, and the only way they can get things done is by shouting at people, having their hair cut short and shiny shoes. Uh, it's just not like that. You, you don't get people to put their lives on the line by shouting at them. Now Jim's changed hats. He's completed a PhD into soldiers who've entered the workforce. He interviewed ex-service men and women of all ages. Many of them thought non-military people lacked discipline. My, my experience still to this day is that if, if I'm going to a meeting, I, I want to A, make sure I've got everything for the meeting, uh, B, make sure I'm properly turned out for it, no matter what it is. But I'll be there not just on time, I'll be there 10, 15 minutes early just to make sure I've got the right place. Whereas in civilian life as well, well, we're five minutes late, it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll just hang on, let's have another cup of tea. Doesn't really matter. So as some of these servicemen consider a life in the civilian world, what does Jim think they should be doing? My advice is take everything that the Ministry of Defence, the Army offers, all the courses, plan early. Start looking for a house, start looking for accommodation. Don't wait till the last minute and then all of a sudden expect the Army to do it for you. Because they won't, they'll help you, but you're one alone. They've done all the training for you and you've now got to start more than ever looking after yourself. Brady Harron talking there to Jim McDermott.